class. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, welcome to our Halloween class. We are going to be making such cool Halloween jewelry, and we have a lot to go over in this class. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump in right away um, with an introduction to UV resin. So this is UV resin. It's like magic in a bottle. This is a clear liquid that when exposed to UV light, it hardens. And so you can use it in molds for jewelry, like charms, rings, bracelets, and earrings. Um, or you can use it in bezels, which are like little jewelry frames. We're going to be showing you a lot of different ways to use this project. Uh, if you're crafting along with us, a couple notes of safety. Just make sure you are, even though we want you in a well-ventilated area, don't be by an open window with like sunlight streaming in because those UV rays will cause this product to start hardening before you want it to. Um, if you have sensitive skin, you've had a problem with resin in the past, use gloves um, and let's get started. So we're gonna switch the camera to the top down view here. These are the projects that we're gonna make. So we've got some little spider earrings with some red glitter. We've got these little boo and eek earrings. Let's see, let me keep it in the, keep it in the frame. Um, and then we have this illusion necklace. So this is strung on, you can, I know you can barely see it here. You can see it kind of shine there. This is like an illusion cord so that when this is on your neck, it looks like you've had an unfortunate run-in with a vampire or <laughs> Jack the Ripper. Um, and then we also have these really cute little bones. So we're gonna start with the, these two earrings because both of those use a mold. So let me move this out of the way. And so I encourage everyone to use the chat function um, and we will try to answer your questions. We have Jen Agnoni, who is in our home office. She is helping to answer some of your questions. And if I see any come by, I'll try to answer them on air. Okay, so this is our first project. It is clear earrings with the words boo and eek. And those use two different molds. Okay, so here's the first mold, and that's how we get this larger shape, that larger oval shape. And then it also uses an alphabet mold. And so this first technique I'm gonna show you is mold within a mold. So first we are going to make the letters and then we're gonna cure those letters under the UV light and then place them inside this larger mold. So let me run down what I have here in my work area. First of all, I have my UV light. So this light is sold at Michael's. If I hit the button, see those lights turn on. Um, you can also cure in the sun. Curing in the sun is an awesome way. It's the best, deepest cure that you're gonna get is from the pure rays of the sun. I also off to the side have some silicone mixing cups. I have some wood sticks. I have different tints that we're gonna to use to tint the resin. I have all the little metal findings that I need to turn our casted piece into earrings. Um, what else? I think that's it. All right, let's get started with our silicone mixing cup. Now silicone is a great material. Um, also, oh, that's what my um, surface is covered with is the silicone mat. See what, if I peel it back. See, it has like a shiny side and a matte side. Um, that is sold at Michael's in a couple different sizes. This is the extra large matte. So you wanna make sure you're protecting your work surface. All right, so here's my UV resin. This pours out of the bottle, ready to go. I'm just gonna pour a very small amount into my cup and then I wanna tint it black. So let me show you what the tints look like. Where are they here? Here we go. So these are the tints in stores. And this one comes with red, black, and white. And all of the projects we're doing today are just using these three colors. Okay, so 
you want to shake it, shake it up um, because it can kind of settle to the bottom. And the other thing you'll want to know is that these are very concentrated. So you just need to add a little bit. I'm going to start by adding one drop in there and get my wood stick. The wood stick has two different sides. One is this sort of doe foot and one is a point. So I'm gonna use the doe foot side to mix that up. And you want to be very careful um, to not mix in too much tint all at once. I'm gonna add one more drop. and sort of just add that. Now I could add glitter to this if I wanted, but we're gonna keep it pretty basic today. Maybe I'll add just a tiny bit more tint to get, you wanna be careful with anything that's completely opaque. Remember that this cures in UV light. So if that light can't reach through the resin, it's gonna have a hard time curing. So I never wanna make it like completely opaque black. I also have some paper towels here to the, so to the side for me to clean up my stick as I go. All right, we're ready. Let's bring our mold in. Um, let's see, oh, here. Let's get a clean mold, how's that? That one's a little cleaner. Um, okay, we have a question in the chat from Kathy. Kathy, thank you for your question. She was wondering if, uh, where do we get extra cups? So we do sell this in a mixing kit. It comes with one cup. Um, and that's the only way we currently sell that item at Michael's. Here's what it looks like in the stores. So it comes with the sticks and the cup, you get one cup. But I appreciate your feedback and we will, um, I would love to add a multiple cup skew for you guys. All right, so to fill this into this little space, I just kind of pick it up on here and drop it. And, you know, even though this is a very small letter, the resin kind of just wants to go into those crevices. So it, as long as you're dropping it somewhere in the neighborhood, it's gonna fill that pretty easily. All right, so you can see I kind of overfilled it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. See, that's a little bit overfilled. I'm just gonna take my stick and just, you wanna make sure, especially in a small mold like this, that the resin has gotten into all the nooks and crannies. If it's slightly overfilled, you can kind of like scoop it out a little bit do a little more of a scoopy here. Scoop it out, clean it up, and this is ready to go. All right, so obviously I would do the rest of my letters, B-O-O-E-E-K. I'm just gonna do one letter here to show you how it works. So I bring my lamp into the workspace. This lamp is a USB powered lamp. So this plugs into a USB, either in a laptop or your phone charger, and I just hit the button. Now, normal cure times are, I wonder if I can let you see it cure. There we go. Um, normal cure times are about two to three minutes. For something very dark like this, you wanna let it go for those three minutes because like I said, it's the light that's causing a chemical reaction that causes this thing to cure. So when the light is blocked by a ton of glitter or a ton of tint, it's gonna take a little bit longer to cure. Now, if I were to put this out in the sunlight, direct sunlight, probably a five, six minute cure. It will even cure on a semi cloudy day, but you may need to leave it out in the sunlight for 15, 20 minutes or so. But even in that condition, you can have a completed cast, fully hardened piece, um, you know, in just a few minutes. So this is truly instant crafting. All right, so that went for one minute. This is set up on a timer so that it will turn off after one minute. I'm gonna turn that on again and I'm gonna let this go another minute. 
Um, like I said, please use the chat function. I love to hear uh, from you guys and hopefully can answer any challenges, any questions that you have. When you're chatting with us, you're chatting with the people that make this product. So we wanna hear from you. Um, and so I think while this is going, I'm going to get out the rest of my materials. So the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to use some of these gold pieces. So this is also sold at Michael's and it contains a ton of little shapes. And the shape that I'm going to use over here, there are moons in here. Moons would be really cool. We're just going to use these little diamonds. So let me kind of just get some of those out. All right, so now that went for two minutes and I'm gonna show you how easy it is. I just have to like kind of push on the bottom and that pops right out. Now, if I had overfilled the mold and I had any extra like flash, um, I can go in with a, an emery board and just kind of like knock off any areas. But you can see this came out really clean. I don't need to do that at all. All right, so there's my B. Um, we have another question that came up. How do you clean the um, molds and how do you clean the silicone cups? Here's my cup with that extra black in there. Now, obviously I would use this much resin on another piece, but when you just have a little bit of resin left, dump some of that out. When you just have a little bit of resin left, the easiest way to clean it is just put your cup under the light and cure it. Because then you can just pop it out once it's hardened. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about um, like goopy sliminess. It'll just pop out. All right, so here is my larger mold. I have all of my letters here, B, So here's an example of, see this little bit of flash? Ooh, see that little tiny little bit there? If that happens, you can go in, like I said, with an emery board or with any type of like little tool and just, just kind of snip that off. A question from Ashley, are bubbles a concern? Um, typically they are not a concern with UV resin. I know that is a concern with other types of resin out there, um, but with UV resin, not so much. And um, if there are bubbles, you can, they're usually larger bubbles and you can um, just kind of pop them. But see how I, I poured that directly from the bottle. There's not a single bubble in there. And so I'm gonna move this around. just so it can, just so it can reach all the edges. And now I'm gonna put mine in there. Now, the thing you wanna remember is the front of the shape or the front of any shape that comes from a mold is under here. So what we're looking at this plane is the back. So that becomes important when you're putting letters in. So um, these letters will be going this way. So I wanna make sure the back of my letter is facing up. Let me just drop these in. and then place them where I want them to go. And you can take your time in this step. You can just make sure that these are scooted exactly into position. You can walk away, come back later, come back the next day, the next week. And unless this has been exposed to UV light through a window or something like that, it's gonna stay liquid until you're ready. Did I put this O in here upside down? I may have. It looks like I did. No, maybe not. Okay. 
All right, so I like the position of that. Let's add some of these little diamonds. The best way to pick up small items is just to make sure the tip of your wood stick has a little bit of resin on it. And then those. This would also work great with some dried flowers, some glitter flakes. And then the other thing you want to think about is the depth at which these elements are placed. Um, so I can like kind of push this down so that it's all the way at the bottom, or I can let it hover in the middle. All right, and then once all of the elements are in place, I like to do a pre-cure. I could pour a bunch more resin in here to fill this to the top, but I like to kind of pre-cure these elements in place. So let me bring my lamp in and turn that on. And that is curing. So on a pre-cure, you know, this has been on for about, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds or so. It starts to harden immediately. Like if I turn that off, and tap on that, you can see that it is no longer liquid. That is how fast this starts to cure, but it's not cured all the way through. A question from Shirley, is over curing an issue? Um, typically not. I have accidentally left something outside for an entire day in the sun and it didn't cause any problems. Um, so I don't, I, in, in my own experience, over curing has never been a problem. All right, so that is cured in there. I'm not gonna let it go for the multiple minutes because I know that that is already hardened on top and that those elements are sunk down and locked into place. So I can just fill the, the back of this with clear resin now. And now I did get one bubble. Ooh, can you see that bubble? It's in the middle O. And I can just pop it, pop, come on, pop for Ah, <laughs> success, <laughs> got it, okay. And then I just wanna, I usually like to take my wood stick around the edges to make sure there's no kind of areas where the resin isn't fully making contact. All right, that looks good, let's cure it. All right, so we're gonna let that go a couple minutes and then I'm gonna show you how to attach. So. You can see these are the metal pieces that you need. You need two jump rings and your earring hook. Um, so I do have those here. And these, let me show you. This is what they look like in stores. It always helps to see what it looks like in stores. So this skew comes with some basics that you need. We did get a question, um, could I have poured another color resin over top? Absolutely. I could tint that resin. I could make an ombre from clear to color. I can add um, glitter. I can add whatever I want in that step. But I just kept it simple with a clear. All right, so while that is, so that's gone for one minute. I'm just going to do a little test. Now, it, you can see here, you can see that that's already cured, but to be sure and to get any surface tackiness, I want to let that go another minute. Um, you do want to be careful when handling a piece that has just cured because it will, it will get hot. So what's happening under this light is a chemical reaction is happening and part of, the, uh, part of that, it creates heat. So it's a little warm. Uh, so you just want to be careful handling that. Question from Karen, could you use artificial craft snow in resin? I don't see why not. Um, I haven't found a lot of materials that you can't put in resin. There's only a few of them that you can't. Almost anything from natural materials like flowers, branches, leaves, as long as they're dried, can go in resin. Um, Man-made materials like plastics, glitter, um, foils, um, 
gosh, so many different things we put inside the resin and we've never had a problem with any of it. All right, so this is gone for two minutes. Let's pop it out. Now this could have gone probably for another minute, but here is what we have. And you can check your edges. There is a little bit, can you kind of see that there's a little bit of extra resin along that side? So what I can do, I can go in with these kind of nippers and just nip that off, or I'm, I'm kind of lazy. So what I like to do is just go in with my fingernail along the side there, and it just takes those little pieces right off, okay? Um, now, to turn this into an earring, there's a jump ring. The jump ring uses, you're going to need two pliers situated on other, either side of the jump ring. I bring one plier toward me, one away from me, and that opens it up. And I can use that, actually, I'm going to open this a little further. Here we go. And before we close that, I'm going to add my other jump ring. And we close it in the opposite motion of what, how we opened it. So now we have two jump rings. We open this one. And add the ear wire. So why did I put two jump rings on here? Um, that is just so that when it's on an ear, this faces front. So otherwise, this ear wire would be facing this way instead of this way. Okay. There's my first earring. Yay. All right. Oh, we are moving along, moving along. Um, let's see. Next earring. We are going to be making spiders. See these little guys? So we used a mold to make the spider body. So it's a teardrop. And then before we pop it out of the mold, we added these wire legs to it. So let me first mix up some red. Just need a tiny little bit there because we, I'm only gonna be making one. Here I have my red tint, shake that up. Put one drop in. And then I have some glitter here. This is just extra fine glitter from Michaels. And I'm gonna shake that in. And let's give that a stir. So pretty, love it. Okay, so let's bring this in. We are going to fill All right, and oops, sorry about that guys. So you'll notice at the top of all of these shapes, it has this little doohickey, this little peg. That's what creates a hole in the top of what you're making so you can attach it to something else. So you just wanna take some extra care making sure your resin got around that peg. All right, we're ready to cure. So let me show you. So here's our spider. Let me show you the back. So we just cured these wires directly into the resin. Question from E. Martinez. Can you make a hole if the mold doesn't have one? Yes, you can. I'm going to show you that on the next earrings that we make. All right. So to make those legs, they are simply little pieces of black wire. Let me show you the wire. Here it is. So this is 20 gauge copper wire. This is coated black. 20 gauge is fairly thick as far as wires go. And you want a piece that's, this is about an inch and a quarter. 
Okay. Um, and I want four of these because this will turn into two legs. We need eight legs. All right, so what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna take my wire and kind of bend it to make it a little of a leg shape, leaving some space for it too. Like the idea is we're making a shape like this and this will cure directly on there. Okay, so you can just kind of eyeball making these shapes with the wire. All right, so here we go. And then the next thing, um, I should have saved my black resin from the first step, but I did not. Um, to make him have little feet, see his little feet, and also kind of to finish the ends of this raw wire, yeah. I can just mix up some black resin, which I'm gonna do quickly here. And we're gonna dip, dip the ends. Oops, I'm getting out of frame here. Here we go. Okay. Okay. All right, so if I dip the ends and then cure it. Oh, but keep this away from your light. Keep that, keep that um, silicone bowl away from the light because otherwise that will harden and you don't want that. You want it, you have six other feet to do, but you can see just by dipping it in the resin, it puts a little bead at the end and I can just hold this in the light and it will cure. The possibilities of crafting with this, this material are almost endless um, because you can make any shape, any color. All right, and so that's gonna go right there. I have some other legs that we pre-made before this class. So here are my other legs. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm gonna create kind of a flat area in the middle. Ooh, that's a little too big. And it does not have to be perfect. We are gonna be moving these wires and messing around with these wires. So the main thing is that the flat area that you're creating just has to be sized correctly so that it fits on the teardrop. All right, there's legs number two. Let's do it again. Three, one more. All right, so. Now we have our legs. To attach them, I'm gonna take some clear resin, put a dot here. And now I want to place all of these. And I wanna to try to keep the back as neat as possible. I'm, I'm going really fast because I wanna make sure we get through all of these projects in the time we have together. But you wanna to try to keep them in horizontal parallel rows. Okay, and then here's where you do want to take your time and make sure they get placed correctly. Here we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to put another drop of resin on top of that. 
Let's cure them in place. So let me show you our earring again. Let me show you the back. So once that is done, we're gonna pop it out of the mold. And then you wanna spend some time with your pliers and just bending those, um, those feet and legs just to be more of a spider shape like this. So you can see like the top legs and the bottom legs are facing up. These ones are kind of facing to the side. Then we're gonna do the same steps that we did in the last earring by adding two jump rings. These just are black coated jump rings. And so I have those right here. There we go. This is curing. All right. We're getting there. All right, so while that's curing, I'm gonna show you um, another example. We also made these spiders and these spiders, we put a little gold emblem on the front. That comes from a mold. This is a newer mold that's in stores. Where did that go? Here it is. That little star came from this mold. You can see you can get some really small shapes. And so we added that start after we popped the teardrop out. Thank you so much for staying with us. We're about halfway through. Thank you so much for everyone that's chatting along with us and crafting. Who do we have crafting with us? Anybody today? Thank you, Karen. Karen commented about um, Christmas class. Yeah, we actually have three Christmas classes this year. And so we're going to be making ornaments. We're going to be making, obviously, Christmas jewelry um, and some other really fun stuff. So please um, come back for all of our classes in November and December. OK, so let's turn that off and see what we have here. So here is our spider and we're gonna pop him out. And it looks kind of a mess right now, but that's because we have to do the finessing. So those are cured in there. So I can really like bend these pieces and get in there and bend them so that they are more realistically a spider. Bring these ones out to the side. Now here, I did overfill a little bit of resin, so I glued these two legs together, but let's see what we can do to fix that. Um, here, let me go in with this and see if I can cut those two legs apart. I like to show you how I fix things because I want you to understand that even if this doesn't come out of the mold right, it's fixable. See how I'm like taking off this extra resin? Everything is fixable. It's a, it's a great material that way. So I'm just kind of putting bends in here, bending this one. This one's kind of like bends down, bends out. This one bends down, bends up. Any extra resin, I can just kind of clip that off. Get in there with my clippers and do that. All right, so I, you want to take your time finessing. I'm not going to show you all of that here, um, but you want to take your time in that step, sort of finessing those, those um, legs till you have something like this. So you have something like this. Here's what it looks like from the side. And that's what makes this look like a realistic spider is really taking your time to get these legs right. 
which I'm not going to do for you today, but that is what you want. Um, and then you, uh, just like in the last earring, you're going to attach two jump rings and your ear wire. Okay. I'm not going to walk you through that step either because I'm most excited about the next two projects that I have to show you. So the next two projects are, they do not use a mold at all. And they do not use a bezel. So this is like free form pouring, which I've never shown in any of these classes. But this is how you can get super creative with your resin because you can pour it into whatever shape you want. So let me show you how to do that. So I have a post-it note here. I'm going to take a marker and draw. I can draw any shape here that I want. Let's see, let me use this side here. But we are creating bones. So you do not have to be an artist but you do want to draw it out first because you're making earrings and you want both earrings to be the same. So I always take the time to draw it out first. So now we, this is like the shape that we're going to make. Next product we're going to use is tape. Now, generally you use this tape with bezels, um, but I'm going to show you another use for this tape. So this is a special polyester tape. And it's made to work with resin. So it's kind of like a low tack, low adhesive. And I am going to put that on top of this bone and then secure it with some tape, some regular scotch tape, just so that it doesn't move. So notice I left this piece of tape, I left the sticky side up. And now we're ready to create this. First, I need a clean cup here, and I need to create some white resin. Let me pull this up a little bit. All right, so go in again with my bottle of resin. And my white tint. Especially with white, you want to be careful not to make it completely opaque white. Um, even though this, the end product looks opaque, it's not perfectly opaque because that can really block the UV light. Again, I can add glitter in this step. I can add little flaky bits, but I'm just going to keep it simple. So this is what we have. All right, so then I just basically paint. I'm gonna start with the little knobby ends of the bone and just place a drop. Okay, let me cure those. Let me move this out of the way. Let me cure that. Locking it into place. Because when in its liquid form, you can kind of see it happened at the bottom. If you have two dots next to each other, they'll kind of join and become friends. <laughs> and um, we want to avoid that. All right, so I'm not gonna cure this for the full time. I'm just basically locking that into place. So that was on for about 15 seconds or so. And it just, you know, it just hardens the top of it. Um, one of the questions just came up in the chat. How many projects can one bottle make? Well, we do sell lots of different bottle sizes. The smallest bottle is 25 gram, 25 milliliter. And that makes, I mean, it all depends on the size of your product. If you're making tiny little stud earrings, you can make a lot more than any like giant hoops. But you can see how easily I just kind of painted that on. Let's cure it again. Um, but with our small bottle, our small bottle is, let me do a little bottle size comparison for you. 
Um, here's our small bottle. So this is 25 milliliters. This is 60 milliliters. And then we have the big mama, <laughs> that's the 200. Okay, so um, these are, I would say with the smallest bottle, I mean, using an average size project, you could probably make, I don't know, maybe 15 charms, pendant size things with this, um, quite a lot. Um, question from Kathy. Yes, Michaels does carry the tape, and I'll show you what that looks like in stores if I have a tape. There we go. This is what it looks like. Then you get 200 inches. Okay, so here's our bone. Now, um, you want to build this up a little. This is still pretty thin. And, you know, let me show you the side of this. You, you do want to build it up a little bit, but always do that in layers, especially with this free form technique. You want to build it up in layers. Now I got a little overzealous on this one side here, but let's see if I can fix it. You know, it would be really good to fix that is a Q-tip. There we go. Go in with the Q-tip, which is also sticking to the tape. <laughs> there we go. This is why layering is so important because you pour too much resin at once, you lose control. So let me just. All right, so in the next step, after we layer this up a couple of times, in the next step, we do need to drill out a hole there. So we also sell a drill. It's a little hand drill. Here it is right here. It has different, I think two different bits inside. And I'm going to show you how we do that, but I need to build this up a little more so that it doesn't, if it's too thin, it might be brittle and snap and we don't want that. So I'm just going to build this layer and then one more layer. Actually, that's a good idea. Here I have a bone that my assistant Rosa, my lovely behind the scenes who you never see, Rosa made this morning. And um, while this is curing, I'm gonna show you how to, how to use our drill. So the drill, the end of the drill is like this twisty bit that goes in the palm of your hand. And then you just place this where you wanna start drilling and start twisting. So I'm twisting. And because that twisty bit is in the palm of my hand, it allows the whole drill to drill. Now it's probably not a good idea to keep your finger <laughs> where the drill is gonna pop out on the other side. Safety first. And this is gonna create some dust. But it doesn't take long. <laughs> You can see the hole in there. It doesn't take long really to pop through this. Quick tip, don't put a ton of lotion on your hand before you do this because that's what I did and I am just moving all around. Okay. Ah, there it goes. So that went all the way through. You can see what a clean hole that makes. But back to this, let's do one more layer. And I can make this as thick as I want it to be. All right, let's cure it. 
Okay, so here with our practice little bone, um, I'm gonna show you something to just kind of kick it up to the next level. So if you have any type of, these are very old and very well used, but these are decorating chalks. If you have any type of chalk, if you have any type of brown eyeshadow, what you can do is take a Q-tip, go into your brown, and then just kind of add some spooky little texture here. Um, I can add as much or as little as I want, kind of wipe that off and see what color it is. And then you can add some sort of realistic bone color to it. All right, spooky. All right, what do we have here? And then to finish the top of it, here we just use one jump ring. And the earring top. All right, so I'm gonna let this go. We'll reveal what this looks like in the next step, but I wanted to have enough time to make this. So here's our illusion necklace. So when this is on, this looks like you have a cutthroat because you will not be able to see this cord. The cord is from Beetalon and it's called monofilament illusion cord. Basically like fishing line. So um, I want to make that necklace first and you wanna make it so that it is a choker size. So in jewelry world, choker size is about 14 inches, but always you know, measure it yourself to make sure that you got it, got it the right size. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball 14 inches of this cord. All right, so here I have my cord, here are my two ends, and I'm going to use a crimp. This is also a technique that I have not shown before in these classes. Um, so if you've been to some of our other classes, you're gonna be learning something new. So crimp, and um, could I have another silver, oops, silver lobster clasp. and our two jump rings. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to finish the ends. Now these same steps can be used to finish the ends of, oh, this is so hard to see. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna use something else so you can actually see what I'm doing. This is probably better for you to see. Let's pretend that this is clear. All right, so the way that you use a crimp, and this is how you finish, um, any, really any type of jewelry stringing material can be finished this way. These are, these are crimp beads. They're tiny little 2mm beads. And so I string a crimp bead on, and then I string on the thing that I want to attach to. In this case, it's a jump ring. I'm going to take the end, just do it with my fingers, take the end, and go back through the crimp without going back through the jump ring. So I, I have some, whoop, popped right out of there. Get in there, okay, get in there, let's see, all right. So then I have something like this. So we're kind of trapping that jump ring in there, all right. Then I go in with a very specialized tool. This is a crimping tool, also available at Michael's. And then look at the jaws. Kind of see better if I make it small like this. You can see that there's two places inside that crimping plier. And so using the back position first, I want to put this, and I'm trying to do this so that you can see. So I put this in the jaw in the back jaw and I squeeze. And what that does, it flattens the crimp. See that crimp is now flattened. So I've gone in like that and flattened it. 
Then I want to take my crimping pliers at a 90 degrees from the first pass. And in the front, in the front jaws, I crimp it again. And what that does is it folds it in half. So first, the first pass flattens it, the second pass folds it in half. And so that makes that very secure on the end. Okay, and then I wanna do that with the other end as well. And then just like in the earrings, open up that jump ring, attach your lobster clasp in this case, and close it again. All right. So that's how you make an end to wire. There's this extra bit here, which you can just snip off. Okay, so that is, and so I do the same thing on the other end of the wire with just a jump ring and that's how we're gonna close this. So that's how you work with crimps. Um, to basically get this. That's what the end of the finished on monofilament looks like. Okay, but now let's do the fun stuff, which is making these gory blood drips. Let me clean up a little bit here. So just like I did with those bones, I'm gonna use my tape here. Cut a piece as wide as I want that little drippy part to be. Put this on my work surface face up, sticky side up. And you get another cup here. And then we're gonna mix up some soft resin. Before I do that, I'm gonna jump back to this guy here, which now has dust all over him and peel this off. So that's what it looks like. If it's not perfect around the edges, like that is not perfect, do not worry, you can just kind of snip and it will fly across the room. <laughs> that's the fun part. You can kind of snip. I can go in there with um, an emery board and just kind of shape the edges. This is an extra step you will wanna take um, when you're doing this free form because it's free form. It's not gonna, you're not putting it in a mold. It's not gonna be perfect. So you need to just work with it a little bit, but also it's a bone, it's fun. It does not have to be perfect. You can see how I can just shape it. I can even shape the top of this to try to knock off some of the shine. Okay, so there's, there's our bone. And this is what it looks like finished. Okay, but back to the blood and gore, which now I've, stuff on my tape. All right, let's mix up. For this project, we're using soft resin. So 90% of the projects that you'll see out there with resin are hard resin. Just means that it cures to a hard plastic. This is made of soft resin, which means that you can see I can like bend this into every shape. Soft resin, it just cures to like a gummy bear texture. So because we want it to bend on the neck, we want to use soft resin here. Wow, that is not even in frame. Here we go. That's better. So I pour my soft resin into a cup and I add some tint. You've seen me do this already. I'm going to add three dots and mix this up. Um, how about another dot? We want that dark red blood color. I can also add glitter. Maybe one more drop? I'm thinking yes.
I could also add just a touch of black in there to get that deep blood red color. But I think this is good. All right, so this is in the middle. So um, I'm going to use the cup. So because it's silicone, it's really, you know, you can really squeeze this and create a pour spout here. And I'm just going to go all the way across. All right, and then um, I think the best way to do the drips is start at the bottom of the drips and go up. Woo, a little too much there. And then go in with your stick. You can even kind of pull down from the top. And then accentuate the end parts here because that's like the drippiness. I'm going to pull this out to the side a little bit more. All right. Let's cure it. Now, I, I did that very quickly. When you take your time with it, which I'm sure you will at home, you can get a little drips that are a little more uh, skinny. I did kind of like fat blobby drips. But let us cure that in place. And then we're gonna take our necklace that we made in the last step and embed the necklace into the resin. And um, we are almost at time, but while this cures, I wanted to do a little bit of show and tell of some other projects that we've made for Halloween. So we made some spooky clear bar earrings here using the same techniques that I've shown you in this class. We made a, just using some googly eyes, we put them inside of resin and made some rings and a bracelet. And you can, the little googly eyes, I don't know if you can hear that, but they still move around, which is really cool. We did um, these earrings, which we love to do here. This is just the same shape, repeated multiple times in different colors and then attached together. Beautiful. We made some keychains. We have this skull mold at Michael's. We added some dried flowers, some glitter. We actually did two different versions of these. Here we just decorated it and dressed it up in a little bit different way. Um, we made these little ghosties, which are going to turn into stud earrings by adding a stud to the back. Here's our ghosties. This was also made with the free form pouring technique. Oh, I think that's all. Oh, we have, we made this bracelet in um, a previous class, but here we, this is also soft resin. So this would feel really nice on your wrist and not stiff. Okay, so this is gone for a little bit here. We are going to take our necklace, which is hard to find because it's clear, and place this down and stick it down. Woo. And just go over the top of it with more resin. Stick down. more soft resin, I should say. And we're just gonna cure that right in place. No special techniques needed here. Um, this will just hold it exactly where you want it to go. Make sure it's down inside there and bring the lamp in. 
Thank you so much um, for joining us for this class. Um, don't forget to look for upcoming classes. We have all of our Christmas classes that are gonna be happening. Um, and so when you do make something, and we hope that you do, post your creations. Here's the hashtag UV Resin Craft. That's at the top of all of our packages. Anything you make with Michaels, you can use the hashtag make it with Michaels. And you can connect with me personally on Instagram at Stephanie Menor Creates, where I show you some behind the scenes of this amazing craft. So we'll do the final reveal here of this piece in a minute. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Kirsten. Love it. Thank you. All right. So our final reveal. We just pull this off of the tape. And get it up off of the tape. There we go. It's still, it's sticky, the soft resin. And that just peels right off like a sticker. Oop, <laughs> sticky. <laughs> and here we go. That's what mine ended up looking like, but I do like it better with these. These, these drips are a little more realistic. Let me show you this one. Every time we make it, it turns out differently. Here's another one. So with that beautiful image, I will leave you. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Go out and make some fun stuff. We'll see you next time.